In this video, we'll go over lead code question number three, longest substring without repeating characters. Given a string, we have to return the length of the longest substring without any repeating characters. For example, if the string is hello, then the longest substring is hel, so we'd return three. There is no other way to get a longer substring without having repeated characters. Now, one way to do this would be to calculate the length of every possible substring. So first, we'd find all substrings starting with the letter h, including the full word itself. Then we'd find all substrings starting with e, and we'd continue this until every substring has been found. This runs in O of n squared time. We're not done yet though, because we now have to check every substring for repeated characters. We can do this by iterating through each substring and keeping track of the characters in a set. For example, to test the string hello, we'd look at h, e, l, then when we come across the second l, we see that we already have an l, so hello is eliminated. Now, each one of these checks runs in O of n time, and we'd have to do that for every single substring, which took O of n squared time to generate. So in total, the brute force algorithm ends up running in O of n cubed time. So instead of doing that, we'll use an optimized O of n algorithm by using two pointers to maintain a sliding window and eliminate unnecessary computations. Here's the idea. Let's use a slightly longer string and say a, b, c, d, c, e, f, g is our string. We'll use two pointers, a left and a right pointer, to denote where the substring starts and ends. The substring starts off as just the first character, a, so they both point to a, and the length of the substring is one character. From here, we'll move up the right pointer one character at a time and try to expand our substring. So our substring is a, b, so we're still okay, so let's extend it to a, b, c, then a, b, c, d, and now we're at four characters. But now when we try to extend it to a, b, c, d, c, the letter c is repeated. So what do we do? Well, the first insight is that we don't need to look at any more substrings starting with the first character, a, because all other longer substrings are still gonna have that letter c repeated. So we can skip all those computations and just move the left pointer up and start looking at substrings starting with the second character. But notice that we haven't solved our problem yet. The letter c is still repeated. So, should we still look at substrings that start with the letter B? Well, this substring is clearly invalid, so any longer substrings will also be invalid. Shorter substrings might be okay, but there's no point in looking at those because they're always going to be shorter than the last valid substring we just saw. In this example, you can see that we already shortened the substring one character by moving up the left pointer. And by moving the right pointer one character back, we've now shortened it by two characters, which results in a substring of length three. This is already shorter than the last valid substring that we looked at, which was four characters long. So the conclusion is, we can also skip all substrings starting with the second letter B, because they're all gonna be either invalid or too short. So we can move up the left pointer again. The same logic also applies to the third character. This substring is still invalid, any longer substrings will also be invalid, and any shorter substrings will be too short. And so finally, we move up the left pointer to be one character past the C character, and now we can resume our search. We then keep on moving the right pointer to expand the substring as long as no characters are repeated. And finally, we return the result, a length of 5. So our algorithm will be, keep moving the right pointer to extend the substring until we reach a repeated character. At that point, move the left pointer up until the repeated character is gone, then we keep on repeating these steps until the right pointer reaches the end of the string. We only have to loop through the string once, so this algorithm runs in O of n time. The only question we haven't addressed yet is, how do we know where to update the left pointer when a repeated character is found? Well, instead of looking at each character and moving it up one by one, if we keep track of the index of each character using a hash table, then we can look up those indices in constant time. So now let's look at the code and see how we can piece all of that together. First, let's create a dictionary called scene, because it'll keep track of the indices of all the characters that we've seen before as we traverse the string. The key will be the character, and the value will be its last known index. Then, we'll set our left pointer, L, to point at the first character at index 0, and we'll also initialize a variable called length to 0. Length will contain the length of the longest substring that we've encountered. Next, we'll loop through the entire string using the variable R which will be the right pointer. R will also start at index zero, so at this point, both the left and right pointer are pointing to the same character. 
we're going to be adding a character at the right index, so I'll save that character in a variable called char, so that's a. Now we'll test for two things. If we've seen that character before, and its last known position is greater than or equal to the left index, then that means that character is repeated somewhere in the substring, so we need to move the left index up. You'll see an example of this later, but for now, this is the first time we've seen the letter a, so we'll jump to the else block and calculate the length of the substring by doing r minus l plus 1. We have to add 1 because we're including both the left and right pointers as part of the substring. So right now, this would be 0 minus 0 plus 1. So our substring is one character long. It's just a letter a. Then we'll take the maximum of that number and the length variable to make sure that the length variable always contains the maximum length encountered so far. So 1 is greater than 0, so we'll update length to be 1. Then, at the end of every loop, we'll record the position of the character we just added. So we'll add a key of a, which corresponds to a value of 0, its index. Then we'll go on to the next letter, b. This is the first time we've seen the letter b, so we can add it to our substring, and now the length is 1 minus 0 plus 1, which is 2. Then, we'll record the index of b, which is 1. The next letter is c, and it's the same thing. We can just add it to the substring, update the length to be 3, and record the index of c, which is 2. Now for the next iteration, the character is a. Now we have seen this character before, and its last known index, 0, is greater than or equal to the left pointer's index, which is also 0. This means that the character a is repeated in the substring, so we'll have to move the left pointer up. We'll do this by finding the last known index of a, then moving the left pointer one spot past this index. The last known index of a is 0, so we'll update l to be 1. Now that the first a is out of the substring, we can move on. We'll update the index of a to now be 3, and we'll continue. The next iteration is similar. Char is c, which we have seen before, and its last known index is 2, which is greater than the left index, which is 1. So we'll update the left pointer to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. So now c is no longer repeated, and we'll update its index to be 4. Now the next iteration is kind of special. Char is b, which we have seen before, but its last known index, 1, is less than the current left index, 3. This means that even though we've seen it before, it's outside of the substring, so we can just add it onto our substring and calculate the new length, which is still 3, and update b's index to be 5. Next is d, which we've never seen before, so we can finally extend the length to be 4 characters and record the position of d, which is 6. For the last iteration, we come across d again, which is obviously repeated, so we'll move the left pointer to index 6 plus 1, so 7. That was the last iteration, so we can just return length, and we're done. And remember, since there's only one loop that goes through the string once, and since hash table lookups run in constant time, this algorithm ends up running in O of n time.